Good morning, out uh, there, my brothers and my sisters. This is Brother Wayne one more time. Uh, this is Monday, March 28th. The year is already gone. Thank God that we are privileged to open the word. We're privileged to share in the word. And um, today, in the adult quarterly, as we go to the book of Matthew, our theme for this, uh, this quarter is the book of Matthew. And this week we are looking at, uh, we're looking at this week, Son of David. That's lesson one, Son of David. Now let me get the music down. Right, Son of David, lesson one. We begin a new quarter this week. And um, yesterday we dealt with the a book of Genesis. Today, caption is a royal line. And as I just sung the song, open mine eyes, Lord, open mine hair and open my mouth. I pray, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Teach us your way, Lord, and help us to understand your word. Let your Holy Spirit interpret the word for us as the scripture was inspired by him. So he must uh, interpret it to our heart, we pray. Be with those who shall hear this word. May it come to them clearly. Give me clarity of speech, Lord, and give me clarity of mind. And I seek your inspiration during this few minutes. In Jesus' name, thank you. So this uh, quarterly, the three months, um, uh, well, April, May, June, we are looking at the book of Matthew. This week we are looking at the, the caption son of David today being Monday we are looking under the sub topic of a royal line whatever the various views of the Jews regarding the coming of the Messiah one thing was for certain and that is the Messiah would be from the house of David even many Religious Jews today who await the Messiah believe that he must come from the house of David. That's why Matthew began his gospel as he did. He wanted to establish the identity of Jesus as the Messiah. So Jesus was to come to a special lineage. He must come from the house of David. Now, because the Messiah was to be the seed of Abraham, according to Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, we say, in our seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Abraham was considered the friend of God because he was obedient to the will of God. You remember when he was asked to go and offer his, his, his son as sacrifice? He moved obediently, you know, and God con counted it for righteousness. God considered it uh, faithfulness and, and true to his command, and he was God's friend. Also in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made, he does not say, and to seeds as of many but as of one and to your particular specifically unto your seed and that seed we are referring to none other than jesus christ your seed who is christ so let me back up he said because the messiah was to be the seed of abraham the father of the jewish nation and from the lineage of david matthew right away seeks to show Jesus's lineage and how he was directly tied not just to Abraham to whom most Israelites are tied but to King David all right many 
commentators believe that the that that Matthew has the Jewish audience primarily in mind. Thus, a strong emphasis establishing the messianic credential of Jesus of Nazareth. Now, read the following text, and the question comes: How do they help us to understand the point that Matthew was seeking to make? I'm going to read the text and then I'm going to try to answer the question. All right? I'm going to be leaving some of the things for you to do for yourself, some reason for you to have out there. Okay, so he says, read the following text and then answer, how do they help us to understand the point that Matthew was seeking to make? And the, 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 the first text is 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 16 and 17. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 6. All right, let me read verse 16 first and then verse 17. Verse 6 says, And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever. Before you, your throne shall be established forever. Verse 17, According to all those words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Now, if you remember, if you remember uh, who preceded um, David, who was David's predecessor, that was King Saul. And because of his disobedience, God took away his, 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 his dynasty, right? He never had the privilege of passing down, you know, the dynasty to his son, Jonathan, or any other. Because of disobedience, he lost all of that. So God substituted him for David. And now the prophet Nathan went to, to, to David and proclaimed to him that to his house, to his house, according to the word of God, his house, the kingdom shall not, uh, shall not um, separate from his house. Right? Let me go again. Verse 16 say, and your house. And your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. And this was a prophetic um, thing. Because David, da David's son became king after him, Solomon. And right through the lineage, that's through the lineage that Jesus Christ himself came. The next text which we should read and, and see how do they help us to understand the point that Matthew was seeking to make. And the point is that it's through the lineage of David that Jesus, the Messiah, would come. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7, now listen to verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no hand upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. But this was prophecy, and this was definitely how God wanted it to be. And so said he, so did he. The next uh, scripture is Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Bearing in mind, why Matthew elaborated on you know the lineage of 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 um, Jesus, you know the ancestor history of Jesus, because the promise was given that from the tribe of David, Jesus would have come. Now Isaiah eleven verses one and two, verse eleven, verse one, verse one says. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. A 
branch shall grow out of his root. Verse 2. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Okay, great. So right here now we see that uh, 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 even further reference was given to that of um, David's father. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. Jesse was David's father, right? And a branch shall grow out of his roots. That's prophecy. Prophecy did come forth, but did fulfill. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and um, understanding. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Sorry about that. Yes, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, I'm, I have to grab my Bible, I think, because this technology here. I know the devil is trying hard not to get this thing across, but he can't do anything to stop this. All right, you could try to slow it up, but he ain't going uh, anywhere. All right, so Acts chapter 2. Now, we look at Acts chapter 2, and it loads slowly. Verse 29, Acts chapter 2, verse 29. So the, the previous verses that we read were from the Old Testament. Now we look at the New, at New Testament, right? Acts chapter 2, verse 29, bearing in mind the question, how do these, verse, these chapters that we read, how do they help us to understand the point that Matthew was seeking to make? What was the point that Matthew was seeking to make? Matthew was trying to il il illustrate that Jesus, the Messiah, as was prophesied in the Bible, would have come through the lineage of David. All right? And those are the texts that we have been reading. Acts chapter 2, verse 29. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us, to this day all right so David right now his body is in the grave that's where he is today verse 30 listen to what verse 30 says therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body according to the flesh he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. Let me go there again. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, that's David's body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on the throne. Isn't that wonderful? That's prophecy, right? All right, let me go to the, the, the commentary. The commentary says, All this helps. All of these verses that we read, 2 Samuel 7, 16 and 17, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, and then Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 20, verses 29 and 30. All of this helps to understand why the Gospel of Matthew begins the way it does. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ the son of David according to Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 first and foremost Jesus Christ is described as the son of David and just as the New Testament begins with this prediction of Jesus toward the end of the New Testament he says these words as well I Jesus have sent mine angel 
to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Revelation 22 verse 16. All else that Jesus is, he remains the root and offspring of David. What a wonderful, what a powerful testimony to the human nature of Jesus and to his essential humanity. Our Creator has linked himself to us in ways that we can barely imagine. Can you imagine that? And as we go through the, this week, as we go through um, the, the, the book of Matthew, and uh, we will realize how God has chosen this lineage for Jesus Christ to have come through. It wasn't a perfect lineage. There were trouble, beginning even with David. In David's house, there was trouble. David himself created such a, a, a trouble for himself and for his family. But we, we don't want to go ahead of uh, the dynasty. We are, we're going to go step by step. So tomorrow, tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, we will look at Jesus' early family tree. And we go beyond David and follow some of that. But I want to encourage you today, my brother, my sister, it doesn't matter what family you came through, which one of the tribe of Israel you're a part of, I want to guarantee you that when you have submitted and surrendered your hearts to the Lord, when you are, have experienced the born again experience, that's what matters. It's not the first birth that counts, it's the second birth. The born again experience. Born again really brings a change in me. Born again, just like Jesus said, born again all because of Calvary. I'm glad, so glad that I am born again. If you haven't experienced the born again experience yet, give it consideration. Give it consideration, my friends. Today, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Christ stands right now as I speak, knocking on the doors of your heart. If you hear his voice, open the doors of your heart, and he will come in and will sup with you and you with him. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you this morning, Lord. Thank you that you have chosen the, the lineage of David from Jesse coming down, dear Lord, to, to let your son, your precious son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, come true. O oh Lord, we know that he is the root and offspring of David. Father, we know that he is a lion of the tribe of Judah. We know that he is the great, great morning star. Father, he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. But even so, he is our Redeemer. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Is right with us even now to the medium of your Holy Spirit and as we hear the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts and he knocks on the door of our heart give us the willingness to open the door of our heart and allow you to come in thank you we pray in Jesus name amen bless someone who listens this morning who so hear the word dear father may it leave a deep impression on the heart we thank you, Lord, that we are alive. We thank you, Jesus, that you surround us with your love. We pray that you'll embrace us, dear Father. You have us in the palm of your hands. Take us in full control today. Someone going through difficult times, Lord, whether it be health, financial, marital, whatever the struggles are, we believe, dear Father, that the Lion of the tribe of Judah is well capable of breaking any chain. Break the chain in our lives today. Set us free and give us that opportunity to accept you as Lord and Savior and allow you to become, well, take up residency in our life, be master of our life, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Walk with God and let him walk with you. Be blessed and be a blessing. See you tomorrow on the other side of study and worship. God loves you, and so do I.
Open mine eyes that I may see. Open mine eyes, illumine me, say, be read divine.